Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Jeremy Goodman, Executive Director of the Roger Williams Park Zoo. Roger Williams is one of the nation's first zoos and one of Rhode Island's top tourist attractions. Jeremy has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Jeremy, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about zoos in 2013, 2014. The organization is, it is a zoo. We all have attended zoos. We've, we all have loved them as kids. But zoos are really changing today. So talk about the, the place of zoos in, in our educational system and in, in our life experience going forward. Sure. Uh, well, zoos, unfortunately, the, the term zoo actually has a very negative connotation sometimes when people refer to this place as a zoo, meaning very unorganized, um, chaotic, things Animals along those lines. Animals in cages, small environments. Exactly. But the modern zoo is, is everything but that. Uh, very well organized, um, national and international breeding programs. Um, you know, we, we're basically a small city that, that runs with a uh, a maintenance department, uh, animal care, education, research, um, marketing. You know, we, we've really covered the gamut. It's quite, quite the, uh, the endeavor to put it together. And it's not just a, a place where animals are penned in for people to just sort of look and say, oh, look, and then they move on. The, the environments are, are really being shaped, and even zoos that need to evolve from their previous infrastructure to new infrastructure, they're really thinking about how the animals are going to be uh, stewarded in a way that uh, creates a good environment. A absolutely. Um, you know, the, the old zoos with the, the iron bar cages are, are a thing of the past, and, and we certainly realize that uh, animals need more naturalistic habitats to, to really thrive, to reproduce, um, to be happy, if you will. Um, so the modern zoo really takes all that into consideration, and, and it's a lot more than just uh, the exhibit space. Our, our keepers are very well trained. They all have degrees now. Um, they provide enrichment for the animals, so not only are we taking care of their physical needs, but also their mental needs, uh, make sure that they're, they're mentally healthy as well as physically healthy. Let's talk about the physical plant of Roger Williams uh, Zoo uh, and, and how the, the animals are cared for, how they're housed, um, and how um, the interactions between humans and, and these other beings um, is, is stewarded. Sure. This zoo has a quite a long history, obviously, being one of the oldest zoos in the country. Uh, it's located in, in beautiful Roger Williams Park, which is a 400-plus acre park uh, right in Providence, Rhode Island. And when the zoo first began, the animals were scattered throughout the whole 400 acres. Uh, throughout the evolution of the park, uh, they were consolidated into about a 40-acre parcel. Um, and the, the structure is really that of uh, animal exhibits, uh, behind the scenes maintenance areas and the public spaces as well and we try to get our public up close and personal with the animals obviously within a safe distance but uh, as close as possible and try to really uh, encourage interaction with the animals wherever possible as well. How does, how does the day um, uh, run from, the, from early in the morning all the way through the closing and the, and the post-closing care and feeding of the animals? Well, zoo is a 24-hour operation. We have people on grounds. Uh, our security people are there all night. Um, our maintenance crew starts very early in the morning, approximately 7 a.m. or so, um, getting all the public spaces ready, uh, clearing the paths, getting the restroom facilities all cleaned, uh, you know, doing all the prep work. Um, our keeper staff arrives a little bit later and gets all the animal exhibits. We do all of our life checks to make sure that the animals are all fine first thing in the morning in case there is something we need to address mm -hmm. um, you know, with an animal that might not quite be right. Um, you know, cleaning, um, getting the animals out. We have a full commissary, so we're preparing food for the animals throughout the day. And you have a full veterinary staff that is... That is Right. Our veterinary staff does rounds every day. Uh, we have two uh, full-time veterinarians and two full-time veterinary technicians mm -hmm. uh, in a beautiful state-of-the-art hospital. So, uh, like I said, uh, the animals really get everything that they need. And our days are, are long. Uh, they're very hard. We're year-round zoo, obviously. So uh, we're out there t caring for the animals and addressing the public, whether it's raining, snowing, or, or you know, or, or 100 degrees out. And there's a logistical uh, component here as well, because just to um, to bring the, um, the, the food in and to select the food and to make sure that that food is distributed, 
and then deal with the waste issues. I mean, even even as uh, th things as, as mundane as ensuring that, that the signage is correct or controlling the movement of the animals or making sure that the animals uh, receive appropriate stimulation so that, th so that you don't end up with animals with psychological problems in certain, in certain cases is, is a uh, significant challenge. It is, and, and our keepers are great at, at controlling those, those kind of environments and really making sure that the animals are, are well cared for. Uh, you mentioned food. Uh, we spend you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on food. Uh, we, have, we get food in from all over the country, uh, everything from you know, restaurant quality produce uh, hay, meat for the carnivores, fish for the for the seals. Um, you know, it, it really it varies tremendously. There's companies that spe you know, specialize in kangaroo chow, so uh, we get from uh, dozens of, of vendors from throughout the country, and that alone is, is quite the coordination to make sure that that we can uh, feed these animals properly. And your staff is quite experienced. You've been around for a long time, so you you have staff of of different experience levels. Talk about how you ensure that that, that those qualities uh, are safeguarded because this is an organization that if it doesn't work properly from the staff perspective, it's not going to work properly for the animals, it's not going to work uh, properly for the public. Absolutely, and we are accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, the AZA, and one of the things that they look, look at it cl very closely is our professional development. Um, Every, we have to submit resumes for all of our entire staff uh, to the AZA for uh, their accreditation review. So um, they're very concerned that we do have a very qualified staff. And professional development, continuing education, is also a key component of that. So uh, we're always constantly learning, going to conferences, trying to make sure that we're staying ahead of the game and, and making sure that um, you know, we're on the cutting edge when it comes to animal care. One of the more challenging aspects of zoo management is the flora, in other words, the, the horticultural uh, elements, because so many of these environments do require, um, e e either in small or in very large environments, uh, a attention to the the plant life uh, that, that that informs some of these exhibits. Do you have a horticulturalist on staff? Uh, we do have a, a wonderful horticulturalist on staff, and, and she has a small staff as well. And it is such an important part because uh, we are in a beautiful park, with Roger Williams Park, and it's a historic park, and we have some incredible old uh, uh, tree growth as well as uh, you know naturalistic exhibits to maintain. So we have to make sure, obviously, none of the plants are toxic. That things look. Uh, wild, but are are neat at the same time. Right. Um, you know that that the lawns are mowed. That um, really, you know, the flowers are all blooming at the right times, and you know we're planting the right things. So it is quite the endeavor. But uh, when you walk through the park, you really see the fruits of their labor. It's it's just a, a beautiful park to walk through from a horticultural standpoint. What type of scientific research do you conduct as part of your mission? We have uh, a number of scientific research projects that are, that are currently going on. We have our director of conservation, uh, Lou Parati. He's um, world renowned for uh, his work with the American burying beetle um, mm -hmm. and uh, has really helped uh, to ensure the uh, stability of that population. Um, we really work. We try to focus mainly on local conservation and research projects. Right now, our vet staff, along with our conservation people, are working uh, with timber rattlesnakes in New England, uh, looking mm. at some emerging fungal diseases and trying to get that on the, you know, under control. Um, we're also working with the uh, highly endangered uh, New England cottontail um, and uh, uh, trying to uh, head start those species as well. So. Um, we try to keep our focus local, um, but uh, we certainly contribute around the globe for other conservation projects as well. How does education work? Uh, you have, on the one hand, uh, a lot of knowledge in your organization uh, surrounding um, management of, of, zo uh, of a zoological facility. So there is a, um, a professional skills element here. You also have children who are interested in education and adults who are interested in, in the education that you can provide. Uh, so much education nowadays is divorced from our natural world. Um, do you have programs that you've designed specifically to address these various needs in these various populations? We do, and uh, we, we use a term that I like to call edutainment. 
um, where we're really people come to the zoo most of the time to be entertained, to have a great day with their family. Uh, our goal is to try to get education into them while they're being entertained. And uh, people who are having fun while they're learning are more likely to retain it and uh, not resent it. Um, we ha have education for all ages. And that's one of the challenges at a zoo of our size is to really um, meet the education needs across the board from our youngest uh, toddler to to our senior citizens. Uh, so we have a variety of programs, a variety of layers in our educational signage that addresses you know, all age groups. Uh, one of our biggest successes that we've had to date is an area called our Big Backyard. And our Big Backyard is a, um, a play area, but it's a very uh, free, uh, free play area. It's, it's not structured play. And we actually have what we call play partners to encourage just kids and adults, for that matter, to explore, to um, to be creative, to just come up with new ideas. We give them the, the raw materials, and then they have at it and just create. And, and what we found, and, and what what the science has really shown, is that um, when when you start those creative juices and you get kids outside and away from the TV and away from the videos and, and the, uh, um, the Game Boys and things like that, that their creative juices really start flowing and then they'll really start having an appreciation for nature afterwards. It, it, it follows almost immediately. So we, we encourage kids to get out there, to explore, um, and, and our big backyard is a great example of, of, of doing that. Do you have a volunteer uh, guide or docent program? Yeah, we do. And uh, our volunteers, uh, we have over 150 active volunteers uh, and that volunteer uh, on a regular basis. We also have additional volunteers that help us with our special events as well. So we have our docents. Uh, we also have a, a very strong teen volunteer program. And, th mm -hmm. and that's very encouraging to see because just watching the young people who really want to make a difference and the amount of time and effort that they're putting in uh, into our facility and what they're learning and what they're giving back to the general public. It's just a great feeling every time I go out there and, and see them doing their thing. And in terms of, of funding the, the, uh, the zoo, how, how does that work? You have different mixes of revenue, uh, of course. I'm sure you're, you're selling uh, merchandise as well. But talk about your, the, the mix between earned and contributed uh, income, your, your budget, your headcount, and those kinds of operational elements. Sure. Uh, well, the zoo is a, a very unique partnership with the, uh, the city of Providence. And uh, our budget is a combined budget uh, where the city does help us uh, out with some of the salaries, but uh, the Rhode Island Zoological Society takes care of the main part of the budget. Our budget in total is over $10 million to, mm -hmm. to keep the zoo running each year. Um, so, so the city, uh, this, is the, this is the city's number one tourist attraction. Correct. Um, and so there's an economic incentive to support the zoo um, because that, those people who come visit the zoo are also spending money and engaging with the community in other ways. Um, so you have that. You have the Zoological Society, which is contributing a certain amount, and they're raising contributed uh, revenue. Uh, do you, uh, what kind of earned sources of income do you have? You have the gate. So we have our, our gate, obviously. Um, we do have uh, our concessionaire program as well, where it uh, um, brings in significant uh, revenue. Uh, our so this is both food and merchandise? And retail, that's correct. Okay. Our education programs actually bring in quite a, a bit of, of revenue as well, which is, is great. And there's a tremendous demand for our education programs. Our, our zoo camp program, which are a series of one-week um, camps that, for all ages, uh, tend to sell out rather quickly. So uh, our education does bring in as well. We have sleepovers, and uh, uh, but we also have our fundraising events, our big Zubilee, um, which brings in quite a bit every year. And, and uh, we go out and we fundraise just, just like everybody else as well to make sure that uh, we can do the great things that, that we want to do. Are there any capital projects, significant capital projects that, that you have that that are departure from sort of care and maintenance of the facility, or, or are you more focused on keeping your facility in a good, refreshed, state-of-the-art uh, um, uh, condition? Most of our capital projects are um, concerned with keeping the facility fresh, 
you know, up-to-date new exhibits. The new exhibits keep the people coming in. Um, so that's really the focus. Right now we're uh, embarking on a new master plan, uh, mm -hmm. a new 10-year master plan that uh, we're, we just started uh, working on. Uh, we hope to have that wrapped up within the next year or so, and that'll be our, our guidebook for the future, and that's something that I feel is really, really important uh, as we move ahead that we have to have a, a good strategic plan, a good master plan, and um, we're well on our way to doing that. So the components would be um, how the infrastructure would look, how, what the zoo footprint would be, um, some uh, evolution in terms of the exhibits, uh, your education program. It's basically a soup to nuts plan, including things like how are you going to fund it operationally as you as you move forward? Exactly, and and not only are we going to build great exhibits, um, which I can guarantee we'll, we'll be doing, but the key really is to run the zoo like a business and make sure that we have ways to keep on maintaining these wonderful exhibits after they're built. Uh, sometimes. Uh, you know, finding the funding for, for a new exhibit is the easiest part, and then a couple of years later, how to keep it going is, is the trickier part. So one of the, the uh, models that we use, actually, is to try to build in revenue generation into all of our new uh, areas and new exhibits. Uh, it could be a new rainforest building that has catering space or, or rental space for cocktails. Uh, could be a new carousel or a zip line or, or things along those lines. Um, so it's, it's just very important that every time we build something, we look at those aspects, not only um, the aspects of animal care and, uh, and guest services, but also uh, how we can make sure that we can pay for this in the long term. And it, 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 it is still done with, with a consistent theme of conservation, of stewardship, of understanding our natural world, of understanding these other beings that share the planet with us. It's, it's a terribly important mission. There are people who sometimes uh, diminish zoos um, without really appreciating the fact that without zoos, the experience of uh, people um, and it is so limited today by the ability to travel to, to different places. What you're actually doing is bringing people into a conversation that removes them from the theoretical. It creates a practical understanding of what it is like to share our planet um, with others who um, are, are not people, but they are thinking uh, beings, and they're important to our ecosystem, and they affect us. Absolutely, and a lot of times the argument is made, well, you can watch things on, on TV and you can appreciate a giraffe or an elephant on TV, but I can tell you the first time I brought my kids in and they went into the elephant and giraffe barn and they saw those animals up close and they smelled the animals and they really could appreciate the you know, how enormous they are and appreciate them for, for the beauty that they are. Um, no TV show can give you that. And uh, most people can't, you know, afford to um, take a safari in Africa to see these animals in the wild. So these really are the ambassadors for their wild cousins. And um, they really do have a story to tell. And, and once we make that connection, that bond with people, then we start changing attitudes. We start getting people caring and hopefully making the right decisions when it comes to um, you know, choices that they have to make, whether it's a, a conservation environmental choice to recycle, to um, not put something down the drain, what, whatever it is that they can come away, once they start caring about these animals, and that's what we really hope to do at, at our zoo is, is get them caring about our animals. We hope to educate them as well, um, but I think once they, they see them, they can really start forming that bond. And once they have that bond, um, you know, that's really what we're looking for. Well, Jeremy Goodman, thank you so much for sharing your experience with zoos, your experience with the Roger Williams Park Zoo, and thank you so much for your insights. Thanks for having me.